Hey guys, Italian Village neighborhood here in Columbus, just north of downtown. We're talking about it today and we're talking about it right now. Hey, what's up guys? Andy Howe here, local real estate agent and Columbus aficionado. And today we are talking about one of the oldest suburbs in Columbus, Italian Village. But before we get into that, please reach down, hit that subscribe button, tap that bell. We've been making all these videos all about Columbus, the cool stuff that's going on here, the hip little neighborhoods within Columbus. Would love to know that you appreciate and value our content with your subscription, so thank you. So, Italian Village, as I was mentioning, we are located here just north of downtown. And really, if you look at it, this is seems like it's kind of part of the short north, but it is definitely its own neighborhood. This suburb was founded way back in 1862 and actually became a historic district in the early 70s. So, the bounds of the neighborhood are High Street to the west, you've got Fifth Avenue to the north, the Conrail, Railroad to the east and 670 to the south. So this area uh, was really popular way back in the day. It was due to its proximity to downtown. There were obviously goods and services. There were jobs. Um, so this area really came to prominence um, from its inception up until about really through the 40s. And uh, it wasn't really until after World War II that it began its decline. So what happened basically is uh, a lot of the businesses shut down here. Uh, there were no jobs for people close by. And, and, the, and the area just started, you know, following into seedier and seedier activity. Well, fast forward to the early 70s, some of these old, beautiful, historic buildings started getting bulldozed, started, started getting demolished, and citizens stepped up, made their voices heard, made this a historical district. This is one of the things I love about the Columbus people. This story should sound familiar. This is the same, a similar type thing that happened down in German Village citizens self-organized and basically protected a lot of these historic buildings that you see today. So today this area is back in prominence. Obviously the short north, you've probably heard about it if you know anything about Columbus. Um, and we're just adjacent to that right now. The jobs are back, the bars and restaurants are back, all the quality of life, walkability type things are back that made Italian Village such an attractor way back in the day. One of the cool areas, there are several cool areas, and I just wanted to like give you the highlights of Italian Village. One of the restaurants I'm most excited about here is the new Bud Dairy. Uh, local restaurateur Cameron Mitchell uh, created this concept. This building had been sitting vacant, uh, what seemed like forever, and it was just like kind of out of place. Well, now it's this really cool concept. There are actually 10 small restaurants in there all within this one building and there's one of those restaurants is actually a pop-up. So it, it rotates. I don't know how they decide who gets that pop-up space, but it's a new restaurant periodically. They've also got three bars right in the building. They've got a rooftop patio. They've got patios along the side. Full disclosure, I have not been there yet because life happened, but it just opened here in April. So uh, definitely on our short list. Next, there are some pretty cool breweries right in the area. <laughs> Uh, if you watched our video on the Ale Trail, you know all about the Seven Sun Brewing. Uh, you know, uh, Hoof Hearted Brewing is right here. So those are some really great breweries to check out right in Italian Village, as well as uh, if you're just looking for some, some bars, the St. James Tavern and the Little Rock Bar are excellent places to go. If you're looking for a bite to eat, uh, check out the, the Italian market. They've got great specialty delicacies uh, from, from Italy. Um, or Italian inspired at least. And they also have a brunch that you can go to in there. And uh, it's kind of feels like a market that might be like in the big city. So definitely check that out. Uh, if you're looking for coffee, if you watched our uh, coffee trail video, you know about the Fox in the Snow, a great little coffee shop. Of course, you know, it's not as cool right now because COVID, you can't go sit inside, but typically when you can sit inside, it's a great place where I like to, you know, bring clients, great place to have a coffee and a rustic little baked good. And it's cool because they, they renovated the space. It was an old garage. So it's got lots of windows, lots of natural light, tall ceilings, uh, great ambiance. So definitely check that out. 
Next, you got to check out the Italian Festival. It's at the St. John's the Baptist Church. They block off a couple streets and it's typically in early October around Columbus Day. It's a three day festival. They have like 35,000 people that typically attend this event. They showcase all the best of uh, Italian culinary uh, skills and uh, they've got drinks and just fun kid activities. So whether you're a family or you're just you know, if you don't have a family, you want to go check it out. It's a really fun thing to do and see that's uh, really close to downtown. And it's like a street fair type type atmosphere. So what can you expect really if you're looking to buy or rent here? Well, as I mentioned, you know, back in the day, some, a lot of those uh, historical buildings got demolished. So today you have a mix of like new construction and these old architecturally intriguing houses. And they're all interdispersed throughout each other. Of course, you know, the Je Jeffrey Park area is predominantly new construction. But uh, if you're looking for or lucky enough to find an older home, you can expect to pay anywhere between 260 and $400 per square foot for those uh, older homes. And Really the price range, depending if you're looking for like a attached dwelling, like a, like a row house, all the way up to a single family detached, you can be looking anywhere between about, you know, the mid to upper 200s, all the way up to about 900,000. Now, if you're looking for a new construction, those options are probably more prevalent, at least right now here in May, 2021. As I mentioned, you got all this development happening over at Jeffrey Park and then interdispersed throughout the neighborhood. There's uh, new construction. You can expect to pay anywhere between about 300 to 400, maybe pushing a little over $400 per square foot for this new construction. And that's gonna cost you, again, you know, around 300, maybe a little bit less for some condo type uh, living, all the way up to a million dollars for you know single family detached so there's definitely a wide variety it does cost more i think it's because it's such a cool area i mean you can walk right to high street walk right to the short north where you know that's really the central point of nightlife here in columbus so uh, great spot here i i love italian village it's really walkable there's tons of new businesses popping up all the time so thanks for watching guys if you have any questions about Columbus in general, Italian Village specifically, please reach out, drop me an email, uh, shoot me a text, uh, give me a phone call. I would love to hear from you guys. And uh, thanks for watching again. Let me know th what you thought about the video down below and what your favorite part of Italian Village is.